Before we get started with this video, first of all, you should have watched the video on the uh, properties of exponents, the review of just all of the general cases. Um, and something else that I want to review, just because I do see some negative exponents here. Uh, so if we have a negative exponent, that indicates that we want to take the reciprocal of it. Now, if we're given a fraction, so if we have, let's say, um, a over b to the negative something, we'll just say negative 1, if we have a negative exponent in the denominator, that exponent will become positive if we move it to the numerator. Now, if I move this to the numerator, I'm not going to have anything left in the denominator, so it would be ab over 1, which is just ab, and the denominator just goes away naturally. If we have an a exponent that's negative in the numerator, we can make it positive by moving that factor down to the denominator. So if we have ab to the negative 1, I could turn this to have a positive exponent by putting it in the denominator. So when we're thinking of reciprocals, it can be a little bit tricky when we do have fractions, so that's kind of like the shortcut that we can take. If there's something that has a negative exponent in the denominator, it's positive in the numerator. If there's something that has a negative exponent in the numerator, it's positive in the denominator. If we just have a straight line across, like here I actually didn't have a numerator, you might notice it was just a single expression with no denominator, you could have, I could have turned that into a fraction by putting it over 1. Okay, let's get started. So these are going to be using the properties of exponents. For letter A, we have x to the fifth times x to the sixth. That's same base multiplication. For same base multiplication, we add the exponents, so that's 5 plus 6, and that would be x to the eleventh. For letter B, we have y to the negative sixth times x to the eighth. Um, since we don't have the same base, we can't use same base multiplication, um, but it does want the answers to have positive exponents only, and here we're given something with a negative exponent. So this means that we wanna, might want to create a fraction and that this uh, factor will become positive in the denominator. So this would be x to the 8th over y to the 6th. Lastly, for letter C, we have 2p squared, q to the negative 4th, that whole quantity cubed. We want to be really careful. For some reason, a lot of people think that numbers are not factors, and they are. They are their own separate factors. 2 is its own separate entity, and it has its own exponent. It has an exponent of 1. We don't want to forget that because we very frequently we forget to distribute exponents to numbers, and that's not nice, and they feel left out. And don't make the numbers feel left out. Make sure you distribute to the numbers as well. So when we distribute, uh, that's going to be power to a power, which uses multiplication. So that would be 2 to the 1 times 3, which is 3. P to the 2 times 3, which is 6. And Q to the negative 4 times 3, which is negative 12. We do want to clean this up because we do want to actually evaluate 2 cubed and also we have a negative exponent. So I'm going to rewrite it. 2 cubed is 8 because it's 2 times 2 times 2. P to the 6th and Q to the 12th will be positive in the denominator. In these examples, we're going to continue applying the properties of exponents to simplify each one. In letter D, we have x to the 9th divided by x to the 4th. So here we might want to apply the same base division. That would be x to the 9 minus 4, which would be x to the 5th. Um, the fraction did go away, and that's fine. It would be x to the 5th over 1, but we don't need to worry about that. For letter E, so my suggestion here is anytime we have a negative exponent, we are much more likely to make a mistake with negatives than we are with positives. So my suggestion is anytime you have a negative exponent, before you do anything else, switch it around so that everything has positive exponents. So what I'm going to do is this x to the negative 4th will be positive if I move uh, move it up to the numerator, which actually would get rid of the fraction altogether. So this would be x to the ninth times x to the fourth if I move it up, where I would have a positive exponent. And now I, it actually isn't same base division, it's now same base multiplication. Um, that same base is x, and it's 9 plus 4, which is 13. For letter f, we have x to the negative ninth over x to the negative fourth. Again, my suggestion is uh, rewrite each term that has a negative exponent to have a positive exponent by switching its location. So this one up here will become x to the fourth, and then this one down here will be x to the ninth. So the nine is going to move down where it will be positive, and the negative four will move up where it will be positive. Now we have x to the fourth over x to the ninth, and it's tempting to want to use the same base division. My suggestion would be instead of doing that, let's think about the fact that x to the ninth could be rewritten as x to the fourth times x to the fifth. So same base multiplication says that we could rewrite it since 9 equals 4 plus 5. And then we have the same base in the numerator and the denominator. So we'd be left with 1 over x to the fifth. 
Generally, I don't really do that. I won't show that every time. But what I do is I say, I, I ask myself, okay, where do I have more factors of x? There are more in the denominator, which means all of the leftover factors will also be in the denominator. I have four up here, and here I have nine, so I have five more in the denominator, which means I would have one over x to the fifth as my end result. We're going to continue using the properties of exponents to simplify expressions. Um, we do want to make sure that no matter what we're doing in math, that we're always following the order of operations. Here we see parentheses, and the thing that's happening with the parentheses is we do have exponents. So the first thing we want to do is distribute the exponents. Uh, just kidding. That's not what we want to do first. The first thing that I would suggest doing is taking anything that has a negative exponent and making it positive um, within the parentheses. If this was a negative, which it's not, that would be different, and I'll talk about that in a minute. First thing I suggest, make sure that everything inside the parentheses has a positive exponent. 4x squared is fine, but here we have y to the negative 2. I'm not happy with that. That y to the negative 2 wants to be in the denominator. So I'm going to rewrite this. And I'm going to put that y squared in the denominator. So it can just join the 2 that's already down there. OK, so now that everything inside the parentheses has a positive exponent, then if we had a negative exponent outside the parentheses, if something was raised to something negative, then I would take the reciprocal of what's inside. We don't have to worry about that because we don't have negative exponents. What we're going to do now, we're going to distribute the exponents to each factor. Let's not forget, numbers are factors too. So 3, this, this exponent of 3 is going to get distributed to the 4. So this will be 4 cubed. And then this will be x squared to the 3rd, which will be x to the 6th. We're going to distribute to the fraction. 1 to the 4th is 1. 2 to the 4th we'll figure out in a minute. And then y squared to the 4th will be y to the 8th. If we have something that doesn't have a fraction times something that does have a fraction, that first piece just becomes part of the numerator, right? You can put it over 1, and then it's just it'll be a numerator. So I can rewrite this as 4 cubed x to the 6th over 2 to the 4th y to the 8th. And I do want to clean up my numerical factors, the numerical bases. 4 cubed, that's 4 times 4 times 4, which is 64. 2 to the 4th, that's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 16 y to the 8th. And we can simplify because 64 and 16 have a common factor of 16. So lastly, we're going to end up with 4x to the 6th over y to the 8th. That will be our final answer for letter G. Letter H, we have 5m to the negative 2 and cubed. All of that is going to be cubed. So my suggestion, first and foremost, get rid of that negative exponent. m to the negative 2 wants to be part of the denominator. So we're going to have 5n cubed over m squared. All of that will be cubed. Now that each factor inside the parentheses has a positive exponent, we're going to distribute the exponent of 3, not forgetting that numbers are factors 2. So this will be 5 cubed times n to the ninth over m to the sixth. And let's clean this up because 5 cubed is 125. So it will be 125 n to the ninth m to the 6. And our last example of this set, we have letter i. I think I'm going to be in the way here, so I'm going to go over here. We have negative 1 fifth x squared to the negative third. 2 fifths x to the negative tenth, and then times 2 thirds x to the fourth raised to the zero. First thing, I don't need to worry about this negative. That is not an exponent. That's just a regular ordinary negative, so it's just going to stay there. There's no reciprocals happening within the parentheses there. Here I do see a negative exponent, so I'm going to take care of that. And honestly, let's look at this last factor. We have something raised to the 0. We're also assuming that all variables are not equal to 0. So this whole entire factor becomes a 1. And we can just ignore it. Done with that one. OK, so here we're just going to leave this alone for now. Here we're going to move that x to the neg negative 10th down to the denominator. So it be 5x to the 10th. And that one's gone, because it'll be times 1, which will just leave us with what we have. OK, so now that we've moved anything with a negative exponent at its location, now I see here that this one has a negative exponent. So what that means is that we want the reciprocal of the entire factor. Um, the reciprocal of something negative will continue to be negative. The reciprocal of 1 fifth is 5. And the reciprocal of x squared will be x squared in the denominator. Now that I've dealt with the negative, 
that exponent becomes positive. I otherwise have not distributed the cube, so it still needs to, to remain in the exponent. Now I can distribute the cube. So when we have a negative raised to the third power, it will be negative. 5 cubed over x to the 6 times 2 over 5x to the 10th. It's up to you how you want to deal with the fact that we do have some power of 5 here and some power of 5 here. You can actually use the properties of exponents. If you want to multiply this out and get 125, then you would just simplify it with 5. It might be easier to not do that. This has an exponent of 1. So we have negative times positive, which is negative. Here I have three factors of 5. Here I have one factor of 5. That means that I would have two factors of 5 left in the numerator. And we have a 2 in the numerator. In the denominator, this one got canceled. It would be x to the 6th times x to the 10th. A few more steps. Let's clean this up. That would be negative 5 squared is 25. 25 times 2 is 50. In the denominator, we have x to the 6th times x to the 10th. That same base multiplication. That would be x to the 16th.